Welcome to Unit 5, Video 1, The Mole. By the end of this video, you should understand the meaning of the mole as a quantity. You should be able to determine the number of particles in a sample when given the number of moles. And you should be able to determine the number of moles in a sample when given the number of particles. So let's start by talking about what a mole is. So we're not talking about the animal, the mole. In chemistry, a mole is a quantity. It's like a dozen. So a dozen is a quantity. If you ask for a dozen of something, that always means you want 12 of that thing. So whenever we say a dozen, no matter what it is, it means 12. That's true for the mole as well. A mole is a quantity. It's a really, really, really big quantity, in fact. This is a mole. So whenever you have a mole of something, you have this many of that thing. That's a huge, huge number. So to save us some time and writing, we usually write it in scientific notation. So this number becomes 6.02 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is Avogadro's number. We've talked about Avogadro before, and we'll talk a little bit more about him in class and how he came up with this number. But this is the value of, of the mole, the quantity of the mole. If I have a mole of atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If I have a mole of, part of uh, molecules, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. If I have a mole of elephants, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd elements, and so on and so forth. So let's get some vocabulary straight before we start solving some problems. First, when two or more atoms are bonded together, we call that a molecule. For instance, a water molecule is made up of two atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen. Together, those two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen give us one molecule of water. For simplicity's sake, we'll use the word particle to mean atoms or molecules here. So particle is a broad term and can mean either. So we can calculate the number of atoms in a sample when that sample is made up of atoms or we can calculate the number of molecules in a sample when that sample is made up of molecules. But in either case, we can use the word particle to describe them. In this case, the particles are atoms. In this case, the particles are molecules. So how do we convert from moles to number of particles? Say I have 3.2 moles of zinc, and I want to know how many particles I have. I know that one mole of zinc equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd zinc atoms. Therefore, I can set up a conversion factor. My given is 3.2 moles of zinc. If I multiply that by the conversion factor, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc for every one mole of zinc, my moles of zinc will cancel and I end up with 3.2 moles of zinc times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc, which gives me 1.9 times 10 to the 24th zinc atoms. The pattern here was we took the known, we multiplied it by a conversion factor, and we got an answer. The conversion factor had the unit we wanted on top and the unit we had in the given on the bottom. If you don't like to use conversion factors, you can also use a proportion. It's your choice, whatever makes most sense to you. Looking at this same problem again, we can solve it using a proportion. We know that one mole of zinc equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc, so we can set that equal to 3.2 moles of zinc over x atoms of zinc. Solve for x, and we get the same answer. It's your choice which of these methods you prefer. We can also go the other direction. 
we can convert from number of particles to moles. An example is a question like this. 1.676 times 10 to the 25th molecules of H2O is equal to how many moles? Using a conversion factor, we know that one mole of H2O molecules equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd H2O molecules. Start by writing the given. Multiply it by our conversion factor, which in this case is one mole of water molecules over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. Our units cancel, and we're left with 1.76 times 10 to the 25th water, mo uh, water molecules divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules, giving us 29.2 moles of water. Again, we did the known times a conversion factor to get our answer. And the conversion factor was the unit we wanted, water molecule, moles of water molecules, over the unit we had from the given. Again, you can choose to do this using a proportion. In this case, the proportion would look like this. We know that one mole of water equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. So we can set that equal to x moles of water over 1.76 times 10 to the 25th molecules of water. Notice it's important that the same unit is on the bottom of each fraction and the same unit is on the top of each fraction. Again, solve for x and you get the same answer. Again, it's your choice which method you prefer to use. Here's some problems to try on your own. Pause the video here and try these two problems. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Again, you can choose to do this using a proportion if you prefer. When dealing with moles of molecules making up a compound, it's important to realize that we can talk about the atoms in the molecules as well as the molecules themselves. Take an example unrelated to chemistry. If we have a mole of people, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd people. How many heads do we have? Well, if we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd people, we should have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd heads, because each person has one head. But how many hands do you have? Since each person has two hands, we should have two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hands. How many toes do we have? Since each person has 10 toes, we should have 10 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd toes. This applies to molecules as well. If we have one CH4 molecule, that means we have one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. But if we have 10 CH4 molecules, that means we have 10 carbon atoms, because each CH4 has one carbon, but 40 hydrogen atoms, because each of the 10 CH4 molecules has 10 hydrogen atoms. Likewise, if we have a mole of CH4 molecules, we have a mole of carbon atoms, because each molecule contains one carbon atom, but we have four moles of hydrogen atoms, because each molecule contains four atoms of hydrogen. One final example. If we're asked how many molecules are in a 1.5 mole sample of CH3OH, we already know how to solve this. We take 1.50 moles of CH3OH, multiply it by the conversion factor, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd CH3OH molecules per one mole of CH3OH molecules, and we get 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CH3OH. But what if I'm asked about how many atoms are in this sample? Well, since each CH3 molecule contains one carbon atom, three plus another one makes four hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom, that gives us a total of six atoms per molecule. Therefore, we can take our 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CH3OH, and multiply it by six atoms 
per CH3OH molecule to give us a total of 5.42 times 10 to the 24th atoms in this 1.5 mole sample of CH3OH. That brings us to the end of the mole video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at the meaning of the mole as a quantity. We said that a dozen is always 12 of something, just like a mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something. Then we looked at how to determine the number of particles in a sample when given the number of moles. Then we determine the number of moles in a sample when given the number of particles.